Adventures of Mullah Nasruddin Instant Reading A certain famous fakir was claiming in the village that he could teach an illiterate person to read by a lightning technique. Nasruddin stepped out of the crowd. Uh, very well, teach me, now. The fakir touched the mullah's forehead and said, Now go home immediately and read a book. Half an hour later, Nasruddin was back in the marketplace, clutching a book. The fakir had gone in his way. Can you read now, mullah? the people asked him. Yes, I, I can read, but that is not the point. Where is that charlatan? How can he be a charlatan if he has caused you to read without learning? Because this book, which is authoritative, says all fakirs are frauds. Wives Nasruddin belonged to a club called The Assembly of Those Who Are Not Afraid of Their Wives. One day the chairman called the meeting to order in the customary manner, saying, Oh, all you who are not afraid of your wives, be seated. All sat except the mullah. What's the matter, Nasruddin? Are you afraid of your wife? Uh, I'm not afraid of her, but I can't sit down. She beat me so hard last night that I'm black and blue. First make sure. Nasruddin was going through a forest when he saw Salim, another villager, lying in a glade. A lion had attacked him and carried off his head. Reflectively, the mullah went back to the village. As he passed the door of Salim's house, Mrs. Salim called out, Nasruddin, I haven't seen my husband for some time. Do you suppose all is well with him? Uh, that might depend, madam, said Nasruddin upon whether he left the house with his head on or not. Obvious. What is your house like inside? Very nice, Muller, but there is no sunshine in it. Is there no sunshine anywhere near you? Yes, the garden has plenty. Then why don't you move the house into it? Wait until it gets you. One day Nasruddin was carrying a plate of food to a needy man. A loutish joker tripped him up, and the mullah lost his temper. For that, he roared, something terrible will happen to you. This startled the joker, who tripped over a rock and twisted his ankle. Feeling sorry for himself and repentant too at such immediate punishment, he called out, Oh, I'm sorry, Nasruddin, but you see, I have had my deserts. Not at all, replied the mullah smoothly. That must have been a requital for one of your lesser misdeeds. When my curse hits you, you will be in no fit state even to apologize. Back to front. Reasonable people always see things in the same way, said the Khan of Samarkand to Nasruddin one day. That is just the trouble with reasonable people, said Nasruddin. They include at least some people who always see only one thing out of a potential two possibilities. The Khan called the divines and the philosophers to explain, but they thought Nasruddin was talking nonsense. The next day Nasruddin rode through the town on a donkey, in such a way that his face was towards its tail. When he arrived at the palace where the Khan was sitting with his advisers, Nasruddin said, Would your highness please ask these people what they have just seen? When asked, they all said, A man riding back to front on a donkey. That is exactly my point, said Nasruddin. The trouble with them all is that they did not notice that perhaps it was me who was right and the donkey the wrong way round. The Rich Man How I wish I could be really wealthy, 
said Nasruddin to his cronies in the tea house. Like, say, Kara Mustafa, the great lord who has everything. How strange that you should say that, said the potter. Because in my shop a few minutes ago, Mustafa himself was saying how much he wished that he were a poor and simple man. But that is only because he is rich already, said Nasruddin. He has the wish and also knows the method of becoming poor. I only have the desire to be rich. Teach us your wisdom. Nasruddin arrived at a village far from his own home and found that his reputation as a great teacher had preceded him. The villagers assembled and their spokesman said, Teach us your wisdom, great Nasruddin. Very well, said the mullah. But first of all, let me suggest something useful to you. Would you like that unsightly hill opposite the village removed, so that you might enjoy the cool breezes which it now interrupts? The villagers were delighted at the proposal. Now, said Nasruddin, bring me a rope long enough to encircle the hill with some left over. After months of weaving, the villagers produced the rope. Uh, just put the rope around the hill, lift it up and put it on my back, so that I can take it away, said Nasruddin. This is ridiculous, said the villagers. How could we lift a hill? How can I carry it away unless you do? asked Nasruddin. It is the same problem when you ask me to teach you my wisdom. How to Win Nasruddin decided to set himself up as a holy man. He chose a certain town and declared in public that the local sage was an ignoramus. He promised to prove it with one question in the marketplace the following day. The sage, enraged, presented himself at the time suggested. All the townspeople were present. I will now ask this gentleman a question, said Nasruddin to the assembly, and if he cannot answer it, you will know which of us is the fool. Turning to the holy man, who was deeply versed in the sacred tongue of Arabic, he said, Tell me, what does marafsh mean? I do not know, said the sage, translating. The people drove him out as an impostor. As he saw him on his way on the road which led out of town, the holy man said, You tricked me. How long have you been the resident sage in this town? asked the mullah. Thirty years, quavered the sage. And the wisdom which you have taught these people is only how to be tricked. The law is the law. Mullah Nasruddin studied law under a tutor. Since he had no money to pay for his lessons, the arrangement was that he would pay his fees as soon as he won a case. But Nasruddin did not practice as an advocate. The tutor took the mullah to court. Nasruddin said, when the complaint had been heard, Your Honour, if I win the case, claiming that my tutor need not be paid, he will not get his money. If, on the other hand, I lose, I shall not have to pay him, because I will not have won a case yet. He will not get his money. What other result is possible? asked the confused judge. Case dismissed, said Mullah Nasruddin. Lost one donkey. Oh, people! shouted Nasruddin, running through the streets of his village. Know that I have lost my donkey. Anyone who brings it back will be given the donkey as a reward. You must be mad, said some spectators to this strange event. Not at all, said Nasruddin. Do you not know that the pleasure which you get when you find something lost is greater than the joy of possessing it? I eat. In a small caravanserai, four travellers were sitting eating the food which they had brought themselves for their journey. 
I always eat almond paste and coriander seed cakes with sugar plums, said the rich merchant. I eat oatmeal and honey mixed with dried mulberries, said the soldier. I eat dried curds and pistachio nuts with apricot puree, said the scholar. Having said their pieces, they all looked towards Nazruddin. I never eat anything else than wheat, carefully mixed with wheat and salt, water and yeast, and then correctly baked, said the mullah, unrolling a scrap of bread 